Okay. How are we looking and sounding? My test. Say something. Hello. 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 One, two, one, two. One more. Hello. Hello. Check one, two. Hello. Check one, two. There you go. I need to check. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> How you been? I've been good. Yeah. Busy. Mm -hmm. Just one more? trying to. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Hello. Say something. Hi. Yo, what's up? This is Anna Ray. We're good. with the real one. All good. <laughs> Anna hello. Ray. Okay. You good? <laughs> Yes. It's recording? Yes. Okay. All right. Welcome to our show. Today we are here with Honoré, and today we are talking about making music and living out your passions. So before we get into it, I'm going to have Honoré introduce himself. And go ahead. Take it away. <laughs> What's up, beautiful Kumu community? Um, this is your boy Honoré, straight from Los Angeles. And I'm super happy to be with you here. Yay. Yeah. We're so happy to have you on mm -hmm. BIPOC Rising. It's about time. No. Yes. <laughs> so we would love to hear about your journey as a music artist. So like when things started and how things evolved and where you are now. Well, it actually just started like yesterday. I, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, music is uh, it's always been a part of my life. And, um, you know, the typical family Filipino gatherings. Go out there and sing real quick. You know, make a little money. <laughs> We're throwing up the money out there. Yes. So that, that started. But I think, you know, when I was like in middle school, just kind of at that awkward period where you're trying to find yourself. And uh -huh. I started to like girls. I was like, all right, let me, uh, I wasn't as popular. So just write a little poem, slide it to oh her. Oh my gosh, you, know? you wrote poems? That yeah. is so I was, lovely. I would write poems. And, uh, but it, it was romantic. very. Well, it, 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 it sounded good, but it, it, it wasn't very successful for me. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I found within writing, it was a way, a, a form of expression. Okay. And to get whatever I was feeling, you know, out, right? Yeah. And uh, transform that into like song. And then, you know, went to school, like took some little music, a little here and there, a little chorus. And um, that, that transpired into being like, hey, what's up, man? You look like you could be in a group. Like a like a like R and B like a pop you know <laughs> and I was like really <laughs> you know and I wanted to fit in you know you want you want friends and uh, right. I was like yeah cool I'll do it you know and uh, I was clearly um, out of my league in a sense it was just like I just wanted to be around a community of people mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I used uh, my pen writing and started writing cool little songs and stuff and that just kept kept working at my craft to the point where it's like okay I want to do this more serious to be a professional. So just going through the trials, you know, left the whole boy band thing and that really wasn't for me. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna man up, I'm gonna be a solo artist, you know? <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I stuck with it and I feel like I'm doing pretty good now, you know, I'm hanging in there. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And like, what an evolution from yes. writing poems to singing at fairs to doing your own concerts. Most I love definitely. it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. And you released a new single, Cassette. Yep. Hey! Wish I could rewind it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Like a cassette. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. tell us more about that. Wow. I'll yeah. Also, I listen to it. It's so good. Thank you. For anyone who's listening to the podcast yeah. or the live right now, check his new single out. It's called Cassette. It's super catchy. Yeah. Love to listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Spotify. Let's yes. Go. Uh, yeah, Cassette is uh, the first single off my album, Purple. Mm -hmm. um, purple like print? Yeah. Okay. Purple likes, like royalty. You know? Okay. Yeah, but um, so Cassette was a, a song that I wrote out of, um, I don't know, it, it's a song about consequences, it's about regret, it's about being in a situation for whatever reason didn't work out and you are wishing, you know, you could rewind it back, you know. And when you say like, that, I can like hear the lyrics in my head. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, what, what, what would you do? And I try to, yes. you know, within my music, I try, I do my best to make it universal so mm -hmm. people can apply it to their life. Like, you know, who wouldn't if they had an opportunity, maybe not every single thing, but maybe one thing in their life that they could, they could just do over again. Mm -hmm. Give me a, just give me a reset button. Let mm -hmm. me rewind it. Mm -hmm. And cassette, you know, I'm a 90s baby, so it's like, uh, 
you know, it's one of those cassette things of like, yo, if you pop it in and rewind it, what would you do differently? So um, mm. I sent it over and, you know, I am now an official artist on Estabrook Road Records, you know, just recently signed hey. a recording contract. So they listened to it. When they, once they heard it, they was like, yeah, this is a no-brainer, Honor Easy. we got to release this. Uh, this will be your first single. So we just released it on the 15th. It's doing really well. That's super exciting. Yeah, I got like 5,000, up to 5,000 streams in a few days. Um, actually getting some good radio play over in the East Coast right now. In, uh, when are in we going to bring it to the West Coast? Oh, yeah, we're, when well, are we going to bring it to home? It's a little money right there, you know. <laughs> but uh, they're testing it. It's, it's interesting, you know. It's like... You know, as much as, you know, you love your art, you know, it's it, the people, you yeah. know, the people make the difference if you're going to be successful or not, you know. What is that process? Like, how do things get on the radio? Um, well, I, I, I've been blessed, you know, with the label. They have their their relationships and, and their pull and I'm sure to some degree money, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, as an independent, if you are an independent artist, you know, okay. you want to just just really, you know, I, I would be like, go to the radio stations and try to connect with DJs uh -huh. that are, you know, I mean, because not so much the major radio stations, mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky to be on that. Uh, we just started, um, but internet radio mm -hmm. is popping, college radio, um, anything like that. And then, you know, okay. IG, you can, you can definitely, if you make those connections and if your music is dope too, yeah. you know. Um, that's what I would suggest because yeah. you know there's sometimes I'll just like blast everybody you know and sometimes it'll it'll be good and sometimes they'll like they'll ghost me like I'm like what happened you know so it just really depends and like from what I'm hearing it really starts from like a very organic effort too yes because yes. I feel like when, when, talk, when talking about like music and releasing you know a new song or a new album like I don't think people realize how much like underlying organic effort mm -hmm. went into play not only like physical effort and like you know talking to people and everything but like the mental effort too because yeah. yeah. like i can't imagine mm -hmm. how many like ups and downs mm -hmm. you've gone through with just trying to grow your music and just like step into the space of creating new things yes. and doing it for you but mm -hmm. also like doing it to share with your audience mm -hmm. you know like that's a lot that is. is going on internally yeah that people don't see mm -hmm. yeah. yeah a lot of behind the scenes stuff you know and I think, um, well, I, I, I really feel keeping yourself grounded, firstly, you know, first and foremost, that's going to make the determination if you're going to be in it for, for the long run. Right. You know, for me, I'm in it to win it. You know, I, I'm not trying to be a, a celebrity, you know. Right. I do music because it's in my blood, you know. This yeah, is what I do. I it's in my that. soul. Yeah. And I, I, I couldn't live a day without it, you know. It, it's just taking me a minute to be confident within myself. Mm -hmm because of my, my multiple backgrounds, you know, race-wise, and I do R&B music with the pop influences, but then the style and the, my content too, you know? So yeah. it's like, you know, R&B, it's like, yeah, you can say you're an R&B artist, but there's like different styles of R&B, you know? Yeah. It's not like, you know, like just R&B and that's it. You know, you got Bruno popping, you got her, you got the 90s R&B, mm -hmm. you got different stuff. So it's like, for me to find my way, like my niche, what what am I bringing to the table mm -hmm. of, of like, you know, when you go to your Lola's house and everybody's bringing food, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. That's going to be slightly different, yeah. but the same in a sense, but different. Sure. And, and I think that now I've gotten to a place where I feel like really confident, like, yo, on a Reezy sound is like, this is what I do, you know, and if you give it a chance, you may like it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And like a lot of what I'm hearing too is like, you start by doing a lot of it for you mm -hmm. and like connecting with your identity and like yes. letting that seep into what you share with the world mm -hmm. and like for myself as a life coach as well as a healthcare provider it's one of those things where like the more we cultivate ourselves and like really know like what like and who we are and how we can share that with others the impact that you have and the liberation that you have through your work is so much greater than if you were to just always focus on other people and like right. what do people think or yeah. like what how are people going to react or like when you're so free in what <laughs> you do and yes. when you're so confident and you're so passionate in what you do it really does play a role in like who's gravitating towards you true yeah because people they're not blind they'll they'll right. i i want to believe like people can can decipher something that's authentic and the opposite yes. You know, <clears throat> and, and like I said, it's it's my journey. So I want to stay as authentic as possible with my, my visuals, my brand, my, the way I speak, the, yeah. everything. It's like it, it, real life, you know, and especially with social media, you know, because 
you know, of course, you know, you, you want to put the, the, the best shots out there, the filters or whatever, you know, not knocking that. But everything, at least that's on my social media, it's real life. It's not like I'm, I'm posting by this, like, Lamborghini. And, and then after <laughs> I'm done... If it's even yours, either. <laughs> I go to a Toyota Camry or something. Not knocking Toyota, but, you know, it's like it's real life. Right. You know? So, I, But once again, that's just for me. Uh, I, I figure, you know, I've cracked the code for me. Yes. And I just want to continue to keep building on that. I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, like, for me, I always think authenticity is one of the most powerful tools that we can have, but it's also one of the most accessible tools yes. that we have. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, like you said, cracking the code and like really leaning into what is what does authenticity mm -hmm. mean to me? Yeah. So yeah. I love that. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned earlier about that new records um, contract that you yes. signed. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about it. That's such a huge accomplishment. Yeah, it, it was it was a blessing. It's yeah, a blessing. yeah. So yeah, I just signed a recording contract with Esterbrook Road Records. It's a new label on the East Coast. Okay. In in America, guys, and uh, um, we were going back and forth for many months. <clears throat> the thing about social media, when you're out there and you're posting videos and you're singing and doing things, people watch you. You know? And sometimes you feel like nobody's watching it. True. It's like, like man, only got three likes on this. It. Yeah. Which, yeah. But, you know, consistent consistency, yes. uh, being to the point on uh -huh. your post, you know, without having a bunch of stuff. It's like, what, what are we doing here? You know, yeah. everything about your post these should be intentional. Um, you know, if, you, if you're going for that, if you're right. utilizing social media for your brand. Right. Versus just like, oh, OK, I'm just going to drink some water and. You know, that's a different story. But with me, it's Unless like you're Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? You know, but but this label, they kept reaching out to me, and you know, I was approached with different things. Uh -huh. You know, very many different offers actually. And um, but I've I've been independent for for the longest, and it's like I believe in if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. You know, so yeah. when you're coming to me and you're like, okay, Honoré, we want to work with you. What are you bringing to the table? Because if you're not bringing anything more or that's going to be more conducive to what I'm doing, it doesn't make sense to me, you know. And even with major labels, you know, I've been approached and it's like there's a pros and cons to it, you know. Not to say that I wouldn't want to be on a really big major label, but sometimes you could be signed to a label, but then you're not the priority. And it could be like, let's say you're on Drake's label, let's just say. And he has a new single or something. Who's going to get the push? Who's going to get the promo? more than likely it's going to be that, you know, mm -hmm. because they know it's going to be a guaranteed win. So that's the pros and cons. But then if it hits, then you're, you're in. So I just had to do what I felt was best for me at this moment. Mm -hmm. So they approached me. We did the dance on the negotiations. I sent it to my attorney, and it worked out. So, um, yeah, so I'm an official artist with them. I'm excited. You that's know, so I like their exciting. plan with the album. So, yeah. you know, I have an exclusive deal with them for my Purple album, which is going to be coming out this this year mm -hmm. uh, i'm excited okay. about it and um yeah you know the album's done you know i, I write and produce all of my stuff so it was already ready yeah. it was just a matter of like how i want to present it you know mm -hmm. could i do it independently of course mm -hmm. but if i have a situation where I, they have an even wider reach it's kind of a no-brainer yeah you know so that's kind of where it's at so i'm excited that's so dope and i love the point that you touched on with like it has to be a good fit on both ends. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. as someone who is a music artist or, you know, myself as a coach, an entrepreneur, like, opportunities are great. Whenever we get an opportunity for something, it's like, ooh, mm -hmm. we just, like, want to, like, get after it. But, like, the breaking it down, like, if it's really not a good fit on both ends, like, if you're feeling like, hmm, maybe, like, this isn't the best, you know, for me or, like, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're, um, you know, trying to decide on, like, making sure that it's a good fit on both ends is huge because mm -hmm. it's like as an entrepreneur like it can be really easy to be like oh opportunity I'm there <laughs> yeah. but if it's not something that's like in alignment with like you as a person and your brand and just like mm -hmm. what you put out into the universe and maybe it, not, it might not be a good fit but like of course any opportunity that comes at us we're gonna be like oh but I love how you really broke it down you're like okay like I've gotten these you know I've gotten reached out by these major record labels mm -hmm. but like and that in itself is like, wow, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. And like, let me go get that. But I love how refined you were in the process and like mm -hmm. knowing your worth and knowing mm -hmm. what Honoré brings and what you stand for and being able to like see through that yes. to be able to like actually carry on with whatever opportunity or not carry on with True. it. So yeah. I love how, you know, how much you advocate for yourself in yeah. your industry, but also just as a person because that plays a huge role in like 
what it is that you do and the alignment of what you do and who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. Your key points: advocating for yourself and knowing your worth. Yeah, it's really important. So if you're out there, it's really key things. You gotta you gotta know your worth. If you don't know how your worth, like you you you'll probably accept everything. And just because there's a, something presented to you doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. So you gotta mm -hmm. you know, and knowing your worth will help you kind of filter out and decipher. Yeah. I'm good with this, but I'm not so good with this, you know, and having the courage sometimes to step up and say, look, you know, I appreciate it, but at this time, this is not going to be where I need yeah. to, you know, and just know like there's something ahead of you that could be even better, you know, but right. you know, everybody's got their journey and I'm still here. I'm still a baby. I still feel like, you know, no matter what I've been through, it's always something new that you can learn from it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and apply it to the next yeah. and then pass it on to, to the next person that, that wants to do what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, for like anyone who's listening and who's like, oh, they're an aspiring music artist or they're in their journey already as a music artist and wanting to con continue to grow, like what are some things like mindset work or just like anything in general that you want to share with people who are also trying to grow their career in music and just you know, be a thriving artist. You know, you, you, like you said, like we're so, we're so like, you know, like mindset. Yeah. What, what is your mindset? You know, what, it's the why. Like, why yeah. are you doing this? You know, are you, are, and if you're doing this to just be cool and a celebrity and you want a gazillion likes, okay, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But there's a, there's a process to get to that. You know, yeah. it's a lot of sacrifice. Um, but if you're doing this because this is in your blood and you, you, you really make music from the soul, whatever genre, it doesn't even matter soul is just an inner, um, then you have to understand, okay, what your brand is about because it is, you are your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, Christina, you are your brand. And there's nobody else that's going to be taken away from that. So when I invest in you, which is like my time, which right. is the most important thing. Yes. I need to know straight up, like, what am I getting out of this? Right. With me on a ray. Okay. Who are you? What are you about? Why am I going to invest my time into you? Yeah. So once you kind of figure that out, that, that, that kind of opens up one door and then you go into it and then creativity wise, you know, like what are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. A gazillion of us are bringing stuff to the table. There's a gazillion R&B artists on all different levels, you know, and it's like I'm one of those gazillion people. Yeah. But when I bring my little, you know, a little uh, but not so little. <laughs> contribution of purpleness, you yes. know, um, I, I know in my heart, like it's dope. I feel like it's it's honest. Yeah. It's it's authentic to me. So no matter what, whether it's successful or not, I feel it's success in itself because I've already gotten to that point. Now it's just. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Now it's just to just to get people to 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 put eyes and ears on it. Yeah. And I I felt like having that opportunity to get the right eyes and ears on it that likes my type of music. Um, that's that's the whole trick of it, <laughs> you know, getting on that highway. And once you get to there, and then you just continue, just continue con uh, constant content, being able to like be to the point because like we're in a microwave world, you know. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like you got like five seconds to let me know what's up, <laughs> right. you know, who are you right. and what it is. Right. Yeah. So once you get to that point, then you may have half a chance. And I feel like right now I have half a chance to do what I need to do. I've been I've been born to do this. And it's just always you get to a point and then something happens and then you have to go back. And but I'm here and I'm on your show. I'm I'm on Kumu. This is a whole nother platform that I feel very blessed and happy Aww. to be a part of. You know, and I'm like half Panoy. So Yeah. yeah. So what's up, yeah. you know? I love all the things that you talk about and like that highway that you yeah. illustrated too, because like it really is a highway. Like it is. You are navigating through a lot of traffic. True that. Everyone who's in LA, you know what I'm talking about. Preach, preach. I love comparing things to traffic because, yeah. like, we just <laughs> get it here. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to like navigating life and mm -hmm. like just entrepreneurial things or being a music artist, mm -hmm. like it truly is like you're going, for, you're always going to be going forward. True like that. in traffic in LA, <laughs> we are always going to be going forward. But there's mm -hmm. going to be times when mm -hmm. we're like swerving and we're stopping mm -hmm. and we're like stopping and maybe at a standstill, like what the heck is going on here? Yeah. But like, we know that we're still going forward. We're yeah. heading to our destination. <laughs> and like, I love how you, um, how you illustrated that. Cause like, we're always going to be going forward. Like we're never the same person that mm -hmm. we were yesterday or the day before or like last week or yeah. even last year. And True like that. when we have that, like you said, mindset, when mm -hmm. we have that mindset of, we're going to do the things mm -hmm. because they're meaningful to us and we know that this is contributing to our growth mm -hmm. and the more 
confidence and liberation that you find within the work that you do, it will grow, but it might not feel like yeah. it's growing, you know, and you're getting from A to B mm -hmm. in a very smooth way. There's always going to be obstacles. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be standstills. There's always going to be something. Mm -hmm. um, but just know when you're sitting in that car on tra in traffic, yeah. we are getting there. That's true. <laughs> and we That's will true. get there eventually. Most definitely. It's just sometimes there's a little bit of traffic. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So I love that. Mm -hmm. I love all that you depicted Thank you. in that. Thank you. And um, you also touched on the fact that you're Pinoy and you're yes. part Pinoy. Tell That's us a little true. bit more about your multicultural <laughs> lens and experiences as yeah. a man. Yeah, I'm a try. Was it was it? try? Try, I don't know. Um, so I'm black, white, and Filipino. Okay. So the Filipinos on my mommy's side. Okay. And uh, my grandma, my Lola, she's from. Um, Pengue Sanan. Okay. So Ilocano and uh, yeah. So it's growing up, it was just like, okay, got all these things. It depends what house we're going to go to that yeah. or dinner, you know, whether it's going to be lumpia over here, it's going to be chicken over here or macaroni, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, it took me a while to kind of like understand yeah. stuff, you know. Unfortunately, my parents never really just sat me down and said, look, son, I, well, my dad actually did. He's like, yeah, your son, your hair is curly, and people may judge you for your hair. So it was just, I don't know. It wasn't like, look, son, this is what we're at. This is, you know, I know my mom and dad, they met, you know, and it was cool, and they had me. And, um, but they never really explained to me, like, mm -hmm. about the culture. I had to go out and, and, and find out more. So um, at least for the Pinoy side, you know, I was able to go to, to the Philippines, uh, I want to say 10 years ago now, and it was great to kind of see like the people, like everybody was Filipino except for me. <laughs> like and, you are, you yeah, are. Yeah, like, but then no, they were like, nah, dude, like you really Filipino, like oh. seriously. And I'm like, why would I make a gimmick about that? That makes right. no sense, right? And um, and to understand the food and everything, and uh, the people were super nice to me. And then you know, being able to like perform at the Araneta Coliseum. Yeah, that's dope. Um, That's a huge deal. Yeah, do the GMA7 show, so mm -hmm. Eat Bulaga, and mm -hmm. SOP Star Talk. Wow. All these cool, huge uh, celebrities, you know, yeah. uh, legends. I didn't know, you know. Right. I, I didn't know who they were until, like, I did the research. But I was like, yeah, I, I actually opened for so-and-so, you know, and just legends. Yeah. So being in that realm, it, it made me feel like, all right, yeah, this is awesome. You know, this is part of me. You know, it's the mixture, mm -hmm. but it's part of me. And um, so since then, you know, just like really been like in the Filipino community here as a Phil Am artist, yeah. right? And I love it, you know, now that I'm part of the Kumu community and uh, you and One Down and everybody, yeah. it's like I really want to, um, to do more, you know, be more active within the community. And I really feel that they should know about me too, you know, because when I, I was like really into it and then um, <clears throat> my dad had passed. And so I just kind of took a break on life. Yeah, it's life. But I took a break on everything. And I was like, man, I, I just can't figure it out. You know, USA over here, the Philippines, you know. <laughs> like, I, you know, I didn't really know where to go, yeah. you know. But I, I just felt like, you know, these days, you know, I really want to make an, another effort to, to show, like, look, I, I may not speak the dialect perfect, you know. Tagalog is amazing. You know, I have a song called Kapiling Ka, you Aww. know. And uh, so I, I'm doing my best mm -hmm. to, to, to be a part of it. And, and just hope that the Filipino community, you would say, yeah, like, you know, you should know about Honoré. You know, yeah. he's, he's part of us and his music's pretty dope. So let's right. support him too, you know? So that's what I mean. And you are a part of us. You yeah, are a part most of definitely. Us. Yeah. And like, I can't imagine like growing up just navigating like that tri cultural mm -hmm. mix that mm -hmm. you have and just like, you know, like identity work. Yeah. You know, like, can you just tell us a little bit more about the identity work that you've gone through and that you're continuing to do and just anyone who you know is also in the same space mm -hmm. with navigating like many cultures and mm -hmm. one as a person like yeah. we would love to hear more about like what that looks like for you in your journey and just anything that you can share with anyone else who is going through that. yeah I, I love my family you know mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just I don't know it, it's different you know we live in a different age now where it's more about mental health and all these different things. But growing up in the 90s, you know, I, I just felt like kind of inadequate. I felt awkward, you know? Mm. It's like when I go to the black side, I wasn't like super dark. You know, I'm like actually the darkest in my family. Mm. Uh, all of my sisters are super light, like mm -hmm. white looking. Um, 
And then my hair was curly, and then I was like, why is my hair not straight looking like cool? And mm -hmm. It was just weird, you know? Um, but I'm grateful for the experience because like, I have so many great memories on, the, on my Filipino side, and just, you know, we just have fun, you know? And yeah. um, I just feel like growing up, you know, for any kid that's mixed, I think it's, it's super important for, that, for those parents to sit their kid down and just say, hey, these are your cultures. This is what it is, you know? And you may face a little pushback on people, even from your own kind, because it's like, I felt like, man, I wasn't black enough, definitely wasn't white enough, and then not Filipino enough. So it's mm -hmm. like, where do you go? Mm -hmm. So that's when I just kind of like, you know, I went inner and, and thank goodness for the music that has been my, my sanctuary. It's been, you know, mm -hmm. being able to write and just express what I was feeling and, and, and didn't even know the trauma that I was having. Yeah from not feeling loved and wanted or feeling like, like I belonged. Yeah. Because I wasn't completely this or that or that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but now recently, being able to like look at my journey thus far and t turning all of that pain and, and using that as my gain now, mm. you know? And um, I mean, I, I like superheroes. I like Marvel and, you know, stuff. <laughs> but I just feel like all those inadequacies and the things that I felt was making me different, those are my superpowers now for the fact that I am try, I got, I'm the world, you know? I got all the best of all cultures up yeah. in me. And it's funny, because- oh, like, yes, you right, do. Right? <laughs> you know? And it's funny, people are like, are you Mexican, are you Hispanic? I'm like, no, you know? But, you know, you mix black, white, Philippine, mix it up, and then you get like a Hispanic person from, <laughs> from Puerto Rico or something. Yeah. So, right. you know, but I, I love it. I love it now, and when I see people on the street, like, like a black and white couple, or just a mixed race couple. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what, I always go to them and say, hey guys, thank you, because it's people like you who make people like me, you know? Oh, and, to see, and to see how, like in the Philam, you know, like my, my, my fellow artist, like her, she's half black and mm -hmm. Filipino, and you know? Sweet. Yeah, sweet, and, and Bruno, so we're popping out there, so. <laughs> I'm in the mix in there somewhere too, and there's yeah. multiple. Like, there's so many black and Filipino kids now, it's crazy. I thought I was like right. the only one, but I'm right. like, this is amazing, you know? So, it, it feels good. It feels good, and, and being able to speak to, to whoever about our experiences as, as mixed race kids, and, and to know like, yeah, utilize that, that's your superpower. Utilize all that pain, that. turn that pain into gain and make it work for you, because that's your truth, and nobody can take it away from you. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And overall, like, in terms of your joys and going through your journey as a music artist, share with us a little bit more about your joys. Oh, my joys. Woo. I'm, I'm enjoying it now. I'm enjoying the journey even more now. Um, yeah, because when you're starting out and you don't have that direction, it just really, I, I wish I could have had it, but it just didn't. It just didn't happen, you know. My parents weren't really hands-on with my career. You know, you have your, the momagers and your dad there. None of that. It was just like kind of me, and then I'll meet somebody outside of my family. You mean maybe your mom didn't tell you to be a nurse. No, no nurse, nothing like <laughs> what? that. Yeah, you know, work at the hospital is a lot of good money. No, no. Um, wow. Yeah, um, but you know what? I'm enjoying the journey now so much, where it's like, you know what? I know my destination, my end result's gonna be successful. Mm -hmm. I know it, I'm manifesting right. it, I'm feeling good about it, you know, no matter what happens, I, I figure your level and meaning of success, it, it, what does it mean to you, you know? For me, how I used to be, it's like, of course, I would love to be like number one on the charts, the Grammy, yeah. and I'm going for it, you know? Um, but I wanna enjoy the process right now, enjoy this, enjoy creating this music, enjoy talking to each and every fan that takes the time to listen to my stuff for yeah. stream, you know, and not so much like, yeah, I got to get there. What about now? I it's the power that. of now. So I, it's just my, 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 my mind state, you know, it's different. Yeah. And, and it is liberating, you know, and, and, and you don't get so caught up in the glitz of every single thing. Of course, I want some of the accolades of that because you do want the accolades of, of your work, your, your hard work, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a plaque on the wall. Cool. You know, some dough in the bank. OK, that's that for sure. You know, but. Right now, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it, and I'm trusting God. I'm like, you know what, it's all good. He, he's got me to this point. I, I didn't give up. Now I have an even more better story, more depth mm -hmm. to, to, to when, I, when I talk to the fans mm -hmm. with, about my music or within my music, too. Yeah. So there's more. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my friend Honoré over here, he's vegan, and I know, and we all know that vegans love talking about being vegan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna give him the space to talk about being vegan today. Ooh. Let's talk about your vegan life. Yeah. <laughs> the plant-based life is amazing. Um, I took this journey, actually, I was um, nine years old mm. when I became vegetarian. Wow. Go back a little bit further, I think I was six years old, my dad was like, yo, get some shrimp, peel the shrimp. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make gumbo. Because on the black side, you know, he's from New Orleans. Mm. Gumbo and jambalaya and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I'm like, okay, dad, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm peeling shrimp. And then all of a sudden, it, it just started swelling up. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh! And my neck started swelling up. Oh, shoot. And my sisters were like, ha ha, they were laughing at me. My sisters were mean to me, you know? Um, I just started swelling up. So you were allergic? Yeah. Oh, so like no. um, that movie Hitch with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. I don't know when he he got allergic. He looked all crazy and his face was all bloated. Oh, shoot, that, that was, was me. Oh, yeah, it was me. No. But like six year old little honoré. And then so we figured out. Okay, I'm allergic to seafood. So no seafood, fish, no fish. I just didn't. I didn't like it. I was very very picky. So my three things were like ma, make me peanut butter jelly, macaroni and cheese or cereal. I was that kid. I didn't really like anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was already kind of picky. And uh, I felt like, man, I must be an alien in my family because I was so different than mm. everybody. Nobody was allergic to nothing, it was just me. So, um, yeah, so I, I started to be a vegetarian, um, I think around 14. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in this boy band, you know? And uh, we're taking a photo shoot at the, mm. at the beach. And the photographer said, okay, y'all, it was, it was me, Carlos, and Derek. I'll never forget it. <laughs> And they were like, okay, take the shirts off. So we took the shirts off. <laughs> and I had a little oh belly. I had a little God. belly right here. And I was like, Pfft. I was trying to suck it in. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, look at, look at Honoré right here. He's trying to suck it in. Because they were, they were all, you know, they, were all, they all had abs and stuff. And I had a little, I had like maybe a one and a half pack, right? Okay, okay. They had the six pack. I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe two, depending on the lighting and stuff. <laughs> but I was like, man. So after that photo shoot, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get into my Rocky status, you know? And then I just started like, all right, I'm already like very picky, I'm gonna be a vegetarian. You know, so I started like, what am I gonna eat? I didn't yeah. know. And so I just started to, to do the research, been a vegetarian, my, my family is like on all sides, like, yo, Honore, you're not gonna even last three days, bro. You know, you gotta, <laughs> this is not gonna happen, you know? So one week, a month, years, kept it going. And then uh, five years ago, I, I wanted, I became a vegan because um, the reason why I never became a vegan because I like cheese. Oh my God. I, I, I like the little, love cheese. little nachos, you know, I love, I love oh, nachos. That's one thing. So nachos yeah. too. So there was, the vegan cheeses were whack back, you know, like two years ago. I was like, this is, <laughs> tastes like rubber and stuff. I've tried like, cashew cheese yeah. before. It's not cheese. Yeah. So it, it's gotten so much better now. Um, so since then I've been, so Carlos and Derek. Those dudes, years later, they gave up. They gave up on music. They got all mm. no hair, none of that. They're like, yo, Andre. And I, I was working out. I was like, okay, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna do some push-ups. I'm gonna get my Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> you know? And then I started getting a little bulky, you know? Mm. A little, little. Then I got my little abs, right? And then they saw me, and then um, it was like the ugly duckling syndrome. I, 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 I feel like that's me all day long. I can super identify with that. Back in those days, you know, like the girls, I wasn't popular. My ears kind of stuck out. I was like, my head was small, but my, I was like, it was just whack. Like my whole, I, I, I didn't grow into myself mm. until after high school. Okay. So all the girlies that I liked after high school, then they started coming around and stuff. I said, like, no, girl, you dissed me. Like, I can't. <laughs> that, 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 little, that little poem I, I wrote you, you, you put it on that. blast. <laughs> They, they were like, okay, this is what he, they read it in class and stuff. I felt so bad. I went to run home. So, so I, the ugly duckling syndrome. Mm. So I feel like, you know, don't bully people, you know. That's and so, right. but, but the bullying, the, all that stuff, I, once again, turning that pain into gain because yeah. it worked for me. And I'm not claiming to be all super sexy or not like that. But I feel confident. Like, mm. yo, like, I could go run 10 miles. I can do some, you know, I can perform when you right. see me on my shows. It's because of the, my lifestyle, my mindset. And I understand, us Filipinos, we like adobo and all oh that cool God. stuff, you know? Lechon, I don't know. Lechon? Woo! Eating meat as a Filipino. Yeah. 
Filipino, but yeah. mm -hmm. I do honor and recognize mm -hmm. the ones who do it. Yes. Yeah. So I do, I do encounter some some Pinoys that are Filipino. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, vegan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, yeah, we're, we're kind of like a small breed, but it's popping. It's popping a little bit way more now. Right. And um, but I love it. You know, um, it, it, my energy is like mm -hmm. off the charts. You know, I've stayed in shape. Um, it helps you. It just o overall, you smell things differently. Oh, interesting. You feel, yeah, like if you don't, if you stop eating meat and maybe a week, two weeks in, mm. you may see some lechon on the table. You're like, oh, shoot. That, that, it's just a different type of aroma, mm. you know? Um, it's different. Interesting. But learning about it and learning the benefits, there's so many benefits uh, from eating plant based. And mm. people are like, there's just no way, just like you said. I don't know how I could. Yes, you could. If you, there's alternatives. It's just a switching your your brain. Like, okay, okay, I'm not gonna eat lechon. I, I love it, but I don't want to hurt animals. You know, for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my reasons for it, but but I'm gonna eat this. You know, um, hamburgers or whatever, or or, or uh, sirloin steak or whatever. There are products. You know. But my go-tos are like beans, greens, and lentils. You know, th those are like s s amazing. You know, and mm -hmm. fruits. You can find fruits anywhere. When I was in the Philippines, I ate a lot of pasta and, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> they were like, "That's all you want, Honore? Uh, th there's nothing else." I'm like, "No, that's trust me. That's yeah. I'm in, I'm in a whole different country. Let me just keep it chill." And uh, so, but yeah, the benefits are really great. Wow. So hey, it's it's an option. I feel like anyone who's vegan, aren't, they're not going to say it's hard, I hate it. Like, everyone who's vegan is like, oh, 110%, mm -hmm. I'm a vegan, mm -hmm. and I want to share with you why. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks for sharing with us yeah. why. Yeah, like, man, he's loco, he's crazy. Nah, it, it's all good. And, and I'm not the type to say, hey, well, you're bad because you eat meat. No, I'll, I'll oh, educate you. Vegans yeah, I'm not that, yeah. <laughs> it's like the preaching. Uh, you're not preachy vegan. Yeah, or the, Sorry. you know, the religious people, like, you know, that, that's not my place. My journey is my own journey. Right. And there's a reason why I feel the way I feel. And it's because right. of the choices that I made. Yeah. Uh, if I can enlighten on, on a particular subject, I will. But I'm not going to be so, you know, right. intrusion about my, about my choices. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. So your top three takeaways for our audience today for with anything like mindset, music, being mm -hmm. vegan. Like, what, <laughs> what do you want the audience to take away today? Um... Well, first of all, thank you. This is this is awesome. I, we're oh just having gosh. a convo. Yeah. We talked about this before, like, you know, like, nah, this is what we do. We just have a convo, yeah. and, and it's authentic. It's a conversation with this audience out here. So, um, but the three takeaways right now, I don't, off the top, is love yourself. That's the first thing. Love yourself. Oh my God, people on my show love Come on, <laughs> love yourself. <laughs> we're like self-love club on BIPOC Rising. Which is true, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Because if you can't really love yourself, well, how are you going to love somebody else, mm -hmm. you know? L love yourself. Um, second thing is just, since we're talking about, I guess, music and, and different things, it, your passion. I, if you're passionate about whatever you're doing, don't let nobody stop you from that, you know? Mm. That, that's you. That is your right to have your own passion. You want to be the best ice cream maker? Then make the best ice cream with all the flavors and stuff and ube and all, you know, whatever you want to do. Just, just, just go for it. Don't ever stop. And don't let your race, don't let your height, your, your look, your age, your gender stop you from doing it. Be who you are. Live your truth. So that's my second mm -hmm. takeaway. And the third takeaway is... Um, Listen to my music, you know? Yeah. Listen to some Honoré. A little self-promo here, <laughs> not, not complaining about it. Follow, follow me on Spotify, you know, and YouTube, you know. Yes. Uh, and IG, Honoré Music, you know. It, it, this is like, this is my brand. You know, it, it's, it's the music. It's about self-love. It's positive, you know. It, it's, it's, a, there's, it's meaningful music. Yeah, it's, it's purple. When can we find meaningful music these days? <laughs> music, like, what are we talking about? His music, very meaningful, very good, very from a highly authentic place, as you've heard throughout this whole conversation here. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's some depth in between these ears yeah. right here. There, 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 it's not just like, oh, uh, yeah, I just want to be a singer, and uh, yeah, I want to be the next. Uh, nah, it's like, I want, if anything, I'm going to be the next me. I'm going to be the next best version of me, you know? I don't want to be the next Bruno. For what? Like, Bruno's bomb. Like, we love Bruno. Bruno's sick. But I can never be Bruno. Bruno could never be me. Oh. I don't want to be The weekend, oh. but I want to be on a Reezy. Oh. 
Ooh. right? So I'm just dropping some gems on y'all. Some just yeah. gems, right? So, um, yeah. So, you know, if, if you feel inclined, guys, you, everybody at the community, know that your boy Honore has great music, great content. I'm going to be doing more Kumu stuff. I, I, honestly, to be honest, I, I just started Kumu. <clears throat> I have not done one yet because I'm kind of nervous. Like, if I go live, it's, it's going to be like, crickets out there you know so <clears throat> my my goal was to like start with you and mm. kind of just get things moving like because mm. people are like who the heck is this guy like who, 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 I, don't, I don't know who honore is so hopefully and i know it will you know it's gonna just like okay and and they'll know you know my goal is they'll know what to expect right. like you know when you go to like a um, gary v concert or bruno concert or or whoever you kind of know what you're gonna get you're gonna get quality. You're gonna my get that. My mom's like, we're gonna get some good luck when <clears throat> so we go to a Gary Vee show. Yeah. <laughs> that's my mom's favorite. You know, that's the classic. That's Kiana, the... <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, Gary Vee, that's the OG right there. You know? But, you know, I, I wanna have that type of, like, yo, when we go to Honor Ray's concert, we know it's gonna be lit. Right. We know it's gonna be fun. There's no gonna be no drama. There's gonna be some, it's gonna be exciting, you know? Yeah. The sexiness is gonna be purple. It's gonna be awesome. Oh. That's that's like my goal. Mm -hmm. So it. going back to your brand and being specific, you know, yeah. and just keep working on it, you know, yeah. and ride it to the wheels fall off. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And specific um, platforms that we can find you on. So you said Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. And then you're on there is Honore. Mm -hmm. And yes. then Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, go to Instagram. Honore Music. <clears throat> um, also have a new NFT. Um, so I'm, I'm in the Ooh. NFT world for cassette. So that's on EQ Exchange. If you go to my IG and uh, click on the bio, I mean, I have several posts about it. We just released it to you on the 15th. Okay. But the, uh, the NFT, I'm excited about it because this is a whole new venture to collaborate with your fans and the people. Mm -hmm. So what in exchange to, for NFTs, basically it's, it's just a, it's a relationship basically. Um, they're buying into the NFT and uh, they can buy into it as little as $10 per share. Mm -hmm. And within that, okay, cool, what do we get out of that? So A, you get streaming royalties. You get a percentage of streaming royalties from me for the next three or four years. So you're getting something in return besides just getting he music. Is an investment, yeah, you're getting that. <laughs> he is a live breathing investment. <laughs> yes, and you're also getting like merchandise. You're okay. getting exclusive music. Uh, music. You're getting um, meeting greets with me. So um, on that, there's um, me. There's several other artists and Ashante. I don't know if you know Ashante. Mm -hmm. So Ashante has her. She sold her stuff out quick. I was like, man, you know, I got to get that low. <laughs> you know. Um, so guys, you know, um, that's another way uh, okay. of getting into the NFTs, and it's just a way of like, look, you know, thank you for supporting me, but I'm gonna give back. And, and there's just a completely exclusive. So check that out for the NFT for Honoré and, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, um, uh, IG. And then, uh, yeah, and then the new music video, we're filming it actually tomorrow and Tuesday, this whole week, for cassette. So that's going to be coming out soon. And just like, hey, guys, just reach out to me. I'll give back to you. And, uh, hey, Honoré is here. Hey, yeah. okay. Yes. Well, we are so mm -hmm. happy to have you today you, and Christina. it was just such a joy to talk to you mm -hmm. and really like learn more about you know you, not only your music but like what's behind it and what was that what does that journey look like and what does yeah. it still look like for you true, so true. to everyone listening thank you so much I hope you were able to take something away from today's episode and just feeling a little bit more empowered in your journey whether it's being a music artist or being an entrepreneur or just like mm -hmm. doing what you do as a human so that's what we're all about on BIPOC Rising so thank you so so much and honore thank you so much thank for being you so on our much. show peace and love y'all keep it purple <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah, okay. yeah.